Hello, this is the TradeSite U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview and Domestic Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Monday the 15th of May 2017 and ending Friday the 19th, which is Options Expiration Friday. Just look at the ES Front Month Futures Contract. This is the daily chart of the broad market and futures form, which is the way that you look at the market. Understand what's going on. We got uh, on the futures up to a 12, near a 13 sell signal. One more candle up would pretty much do it. Been very narrow range week again, unfortunately. Uh, slow drift lower for the most part, but we're still sitting right where we've been for months. It's been an 80 point range on the S&P since February, early February. We're now into May. So not a very exciting market overall. Let's go through the major indices on the daily charts. Then we'll look at the intra-week action to see what happened. And we'll take a look at the economic data going forward. Again, options expiration this week. So here's crude oil. Closed at 47.82. That's a little bit of a bounce back from the low the week before, down near 44. Gold up $3.10 on Friday at 12.27.30. S&P Cash Index, which does have a 13 sell signal, and this is interesting, um, down 3.4, 3.54 on Friday. Uh, almost uh, basically right at that 10-day moving average at this point in time. Um, we've got the uh, Nasdaq 100 up 12.59. Uh, basically, a new closing high on the NASDAQ, thanks to you know some of the usuals, Amazon being up 13 again, because why not? We'll get there in a minute. Socks up 2, not a big deal. Biotech's up 10, still operating under the 13 sell signal from two months ago. There, you could pretty much say that's worn off at this point. The VIX at 1040, again, one, some of the lowest readings ever uh, received on the, achieved on the VIX this week, as it broke under $10 for a bit and even closed under 10 can't remember when that's happened. That's that's what's leading to no volatility in the market at all whatsoever. The trend, 1.25, 10-day moving average exactly at 1. NASDAQ volume on Friday was the worst of the week by far, only 1.6 billion. 10-day moving average of NASDAQ volume is 1.79, which isn't great either. We had better volume, obviously, back at the end of last year. Now, NASDAQ advanced decline ratio, negative 450. NASDAQ, New York, negative 394. And then here's where the NASDAQ was up, with the exception of this first one. Google was down uh, 75 cents on Friday, but still, still near all-time highs. Apple up 215. Apple's heavily weighted in, in the NASDAQ. Uh, Amazon up 13.73, new closing high there. Netflix up 2.27. Tesla up 1.71. So those five stocks basically account for why the NASDAQ's been on a tear. Nothing else has really moved, to be honest, if you look at everything else on average. 20-year uh, bond ETF to TLT up 91 cents to 121.39. The Dow Jones closed down 22, which is a blip. Goldman Sachs down a uh, buck 94 again, but still been flat ever since that 13 buy signal. Just using that risk line as support. All right, let's take a look at the intra-week action. We'll switch this to 10-minute candles and see what we can see. So, you know, this was a very uneventful week. Um, the funny thing is. We did better probably Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with stocks, even though Thursday is the one day they had a little bit of volatility. The gap down, pushed lower, and then the bounce back in the end. But, yeah, Monday very flat, uh, narrow range. Tuesday very flat, a little gap up, went a little higher, but then came back, closed even. Wednesday flat opening, a little pop before lunch, and then dead flat in the afternoon. The net of those three days is that we were basically in an 11-point range for the whole time, and we closed even. And then Thursday, gap down and pushed lower, but came back a bit. Couldn't fill the gap, but closed right where we opened. Friday, a little gap down, and then dead flat all day on that very, very, very light volume. Here's the NASDAQ side. Notice this one. Look at this. So Tuesday, we on that run-up Tuesday, we had the 13 sell signal right at the high of the week. And then came in Wednesday and Thursday, and then back up. And then on Friday, another 13 sell signal, and the risk line there has contained the market. So both of those signals pretty much right on uh, on the NASDAQ. All right. I'm going to put this back to five minutes for later stuff. We'll take one more look at uh, the ES, and then let's get to the calendar here. So what do we have coming out this week? Uh, Monday, we've got uh, Empire Manufacturing Index. Uh, oops, sorry about that. Empire Manufacturing Index and at 8.30 a.m. and tick long-term flows at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Tuesday, we've got Housing Starts and Building Permits an hour before the bell, Capacity Utilization and Industrial Production at 9.15 a.m. Eastern Time. Wednesday, we've got the MBA Mortgage Applications Index at 7 a.m. Eastern. Crude oil inventories at 10.30, an hour into the market. Uh, on Thursday, we've got uh, initial and continuing jobless claims in the Philly Fed an hour before the bell. Leading indicators 30 minutes in and Natty Gas an hour in. Friday, there's no data, but again, remember, it's ex options expiration. 
This is not a triple expiration, uh, so we would potentially have an options unraveling move Wednesday or Thursday if there's anything to happen. Market's been so flat, hard to believe there's heavily weighted options positions either way, and it's not triple expiration. So again, we may not see much of one. We'll keep an eye out for that. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken the trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple of weeks. Hope to see you there. Have a great trading week.